I am really glad that I used threaded studs to hold those tube plates in there instead of rivets like I was thinking because I have taken this thing apart and put it back together about 50 times so far. Hello internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. I'm back on the vertical fire tube boiler build today and I'm going to make a critical infrastructural component for any boiler and that's the boiler bushings along with some fixturing that we're going to need to silver solder them. So let's go. Boiler bushings are critical because the boiler shell itself is not thick enough to carry threads. So we've got four spots in the shell here for the various fixtures and then two holes on top for the steam output valves that go on this boiler. I'm going to make these bushings with phosphor bronze. I happen to have this chunk in the stockpile. It's quite a bit too large in diameter for what I need, but it, uh, it's what I have, so I'm going to use it. Now I'm going to double check what the actual sizes of all of these holes are because it's important to have exactly the right silver solder clearance for each bushing. And these holes were just drilled so they might vary a little bit in diameter. So I measured the two valve holes at the top and I was hoping that they would be close enough to each other that I could pick one size that would match for both. I'm looking for, you know, between one and three thou of clearance around each bushing for the silver solder or silver solder if you prefer. I admit that solder is a more pleasant word to say, but solder is just easier to say for those of us raised in North America. I'm sorry, but I might try mixing and matching the two. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to start by making the two steam valve bushings at the top. So I'll chuck up the material here in the three jaw and I'll get the indicator out and dial this in. Oh, yeah, I guess I don't need to do that. Yeah, sorry, the three jaw sat on my mill for like two months while doing other parts of this project, so I forgot how to use them on the lathe. These bushings are basically a bunch of turning to a shoulder operations, so I've got an 85 degree tool here for cutting inside shoulders, and it's easy to line it up using the chuck jaw there and the stock. Now I will face this off, as is tradition. An easy way to get a precise length on the lathe is to set up an indicator right after facing. You know the tool is right on that surface because it just created it, so now your length will be perfect. So I'm going to turn down the OD to the outermost diameter of the bushing. And on the second pass, oh my goodness, crazy things happened. Look at that curve that it just created. So what's happening there is the gib on my cross slide is actually loose and uh, it pushed away from the work as it was turning. It uh, wasn't noticeable until I did a heavier cut there. So I uh, paused there, tightened up the gib and proceeded to finish these cuts. I also changed out the tool to this one, which I like better. The 85 degree inside corner tool is great when you need really precise shoulders, but honestly for these bushings, I don't. And just using a straight sided tool like this is a lot quicker. With a tool like this, the precision of the inside corner is down to how straight the grind on the tool is and how straight the tool post is, etc. But it'll still be close enough for these boiler bushings. I'm using the micrometer here because the OD of these is fairly important. I do want to get within a thou here of my final dimension because again, we're aiming for just the right silver solder clearance. Ooh, I said solder. So why do we use phosphor bronze for this? Well, copper doesn't hold a thread very well, so you wouldn't want to make the bushings with that. And brass might seem like a good choice, but brass, when in contact with the copper shell and the live steam, suffers from something called dezincification, where the zinc is leached out of it by the steam and the material can become brittle. Now, the actual danger of that for model engineers is probably overstated. Most of these engines and boilers are only going to ever run for a handful of hours their entire lives, but nevertheless, we make these out of phosphor bronze just to be on the safe side. If you watched the first video in this series, then you know that I was considering using aluminum bronze for this because I had a big chunk of it that was a good size. But uh, my viewers and patrons warned me away from that because apparently it's not compatible with traditional silver solder that we use on model boilers. So thank you all for that. And I went with this phosphor bronze, even though it's quite a bit oversized and I'm making a lot of chips, but that's okay. When I'm taking my final measurement, I always deburr that outside edge before taking the measurement, especially if the depth isn't enough for the entire anvil on the micrometer because there might be a burr there that would interfere with the measurement. Take that final cut, deburr it one more time, and double check my final measurement. And now that looks good. Now we need a hole in the middle of this thing so it can do the job it's designed to do, which is to create threads where normally there could be none. 
These top two steam valve bushings are 5 16 32, which is a bit of an unusual thread, but fairly common in model engineering. So I've got the tapping drill size for that here. I'm drilling deep enough for two of these bushings here. I'm going to make both of the steam valve bushings kind of at the same time, but not exactly as you'll see here. Now I can go in with this spring-loaded tap follower. Your forearm makes a great high-speed chuck adjustment tool. And in we go with the tap. I'm going straight in with the bottoming tap here. I'm not using a taper tap because this hole just isn't deep enough for the taper tap to really have much of an effect. And when you're tapping on the lathe, you don't really need to go in with the taper tap first anyway. The lathe is keeping it straight for us. And the obligatory squeezy air so we can admire our handiwork. That's looking pretty nice. Now we can part this off and to do this I'm just going to line up the edge of the parting blade with my scale there. You can just kind of wiggle the scale back and forth until you feel it not catching the edge anymore. You want to be just past where it's catching the edge. And then you can set an indicator on that point and then measure the depth of your part from here. And in we go with the parting blade. I'll bring in a stick here to catch the part so it doesn't land in the chip tray, which definitely always works. And Yahtzee. Yeah, should pick it out of the chip tray. So far, so good. So I made two of those the same way after a little deburring. That's ready to go in the boiler. Now for the four bushings on the front, once again, I'm measuring all four of them just to make sure that they're all the same size. And they aren't. There's two on opposite corners that are kind of noticeably different sizes. So I'm going to make them in pairs here and I'll make sure to mark which ones go where. So I'll face off the mess left by the other two bushings. Now I considered mass producing these four bushings because as soon as you have four of something, it's worth starting to think about that. And I initially thought, well, maybe I can make all four of them at once just with the parting tool to create the narrow diameters in between each of the wider diameters. But I was kind of concerned that with all four parts, uh, this material wouldn't be strong enough to withstand the parting blade at the end. So I decided to do kind of a compromise. So I'm going to square up the tool post and I pulled out enough stock for all four bushings and I'm going to turn down the entire diameter here to the OD of the four bushings. And I'm going to make them in pairs and I'm going to do it in a way that leverages the thickness of the stock. So you can see how I've turned down enough for two of these bushings and then by leaving the rest of that stock thick, it's going to provide the support needed for the other two. And the other advantage to doing it this way is that it allows me to make all four bushings in one chucking, which allows me to maintain concentricity. Now, perfect concentricity is obviously not important for boiler bushings, but this is a good technique to practice for future times when it might matter quite a bit. Anytime you can do something in the three jaw chuck with one chucking and maintain your concentricity, that's a big win. So I'm sneaking up on the dimension for the first one here, but this will save me time later. Once I get the dimension perfect, then I make a note of the cross slide hand wheel and go ahead and tap those threads. Now I drilled deep enough for all four bushings and I'm tapping as far as I can now. My tap is only long enough for two of these bushings at once, but I'll tap all the way down. So I have four bushings drilled and two of them tapped at this point. Then I part this thing off to length using the same method as before. So now you can see hopefully here how I've got enough support there with the thick stock still in the chuck and I've only got a little bit of effective stick out with the very small diameter here for making these two bushings. So by making them two at a time I'm leveraging the thickness of my stock there and then I don't have to move the stock in the chuck and so I've maintained concentricity throughout all of these steps. And Yahtzee! Then the next three go much faster with a couple of simple tricks. So once again, I faced off that mess there. And then without moving the tool, I set the indicator because I know exactly where that face is since the tool just created it. And that will allow me to measure the length. And then importantly, I noted the hand wheel setting from the previous one. Remember, I'm making them in pairs because each pair is the same dimension. So I can just turn down in multiple passes as needed to get to the same hand wheel setting. And I know I'll be at the same dimension. And then deburr that and once again part it off. And if I did my math right, the parting blade should be right on the edge of the remaining stock, which it is. That's good news. It's nice when things go correctly. And then part that off. Most of the deburring is done with pliers. You can just use them like a can opener, take the chunk off of there, and then I'll finish it up with the Noga tools. 
People always tell me to bevel the front of my parting blade, and I know that works for some people, but I like thin parting blades, and so that trick doesn't really work because it just causes the blade to deflect. So I do it this way, but you know, you do you. Now I'm gonna mark them because they are specific to their locations in some cases. I'm marking them with the clever Kozo Hiraoka method, which he recommends in his locomotive building books, which is to number them left to right and front to back, or in this case, top to bottom. He explains it well in his book, but it's a simple system that ensures that every part always ends up in the correct place when you're done. There, job done, right? Not so fast. We need plugs to go in these bushings for hydrostatic testing in the future. These plugs will also be useful when silver soldering. So we need four of them, and luckily all four of these are identical, so we can make these in a very quick method, which I'll show here in a moment. So I'm turning down some hex bar stock to the diameter of the threads there in the center, which is quarter 40 for the front bushings. I'm sneaking up on the dimension here once again and noting the cross slide hand wheel, and then cutting the threads on there now, the cool thing about brass is that it's very easy to cut, which we're gonna leverage here in a moment. But I'll start by parting off this first one. I'm gonna go in part way, so to speak, and go ahead and deburr the back side of that with the file just to make them a little more pleasant to handle. And Yahtzee. Now, the cool thing is for the next three, because this is brass and you can cut pretty much infinite depth of cut with it on even a small lathe like this, just go ahead and turn that cross slide right to the final dimension, and look at that magic. Yeah, we can make chips like a big girl lathe in brass, you just mow that right down to the final dimension. It's like a 250 thou depth of cut, something like that. It's very exciting for a hobbyist to make a cut like that. And you know the rest of this story. Thread, deburr, part, Yahtzee. The next important thing is we need a silver soldering fixture because these bushings have some slop in them as desired for silver solder clearance. However, two of those bushings are for the water gauge and the water gauge is a glass tube held between two of the bushings. So the alignment on those bushings has to be perfect. How do we do that? By making a fixture to maintain the alignment of those bushings during silver soldering. I'm gonna do that with a piece of steel and the only scrap I could find was this really miserable chunk of demon steel that I think was welding practice and some other stuff, I don't know. This is hot rolled steel plate, so I'll use my odd leg dividers here and scribe the steel surface directly. You've often seen me do this with layout fluid and using my calipers to mark the fluid. And in that case, I'm not scribing the surface, so please stop commenting about how terrible that is. I'm only scratching the layout blue on the surface. In this case, however, I'm going a little deeper, so using the carbide tipped dividers. And I cut those out with the portable band saw. These cuts don't have to be very good, so just freehanding those. The one cut that I do want to be straight is the cut between the two pieces down the long side. So for that, using another piece of scrap as a straight edge for the band saw works very well. It works best if you leave your straight edge piece a little bit above the surface. You have something to line this edge of the saw blade up when you start, and then just run that right down the straight edge. And this works better than you might think. You might expect, oh, it's going to dig in to the straight edge, but the blade actually wants to follow the path of least resistance, so it tends to just make a straight cut when you do that. It works surprisingly well. Quick deburr, and we're gonna need some holes in these that are the precise distance apart that the bushings are in the boiler, which fortunately I know that distance from my drawings. So what I'm gonna do is just gang drill these together because the two pairs of bushings are the same distance apart. So I'm gonna clamp them together with these shop made tool makers clamps. I have a video series on making these clamps if you're interested and the drawings and models for them are available on my Patreon if you would like to make a set yourself. And I got some sacrificial parallel scrap there from the junk bin, which happens to be narrower than the stock, which is very handy. So I can clamp that in there like so. This clamping isn't great, of course, because the edges of that stock aren't very straight, but that's okay. It'll be good enough for a light drilling operation like this. And I will roughly mark the center once again with the odd leg calipers. You just flip it around and mark both sides and it'll kind of split the difference on the error. Now I'm going to mark one side and zero the DRO there, making sure there's room for the drill next to the clamp, and then I'm going to run down to the other side, the prescribed distance using the DRO, and then make sure that I'm going to clear the clamp there as well. If not, I can just shift these holes a little bit one way or the other. It doesn't matter where the holes are on the stock, of course, it just matters that they're the exact right distance apart. 
So with those both center drilled, I can then just go in with my final clearance drill size. Again, dimensions not critical here. I'm just wanting to make some holes. That went well, except for the fact that I completely botched the centering of those holes, apparently. I don't know how that happened, but yeah, nobody's watching this anyway, right? This whole internet thing seems like a fad. So I'll deburr those, and let's do a little test fit on the boiler. So the idea is I can use those plugs I made to retain these fixtures in place, and then these plugs will also help protect the threads from the heat of silver soldering. And then that'll go in there like so. It's a little bit snug at first, but then what you can do is just loosen the plugs a little bit and just kind of let the bushings find their center and then tighten them back up again. And that looks good. And I'll do the other one the same way. Now we need some way to retain those because they're going to tend to fall out of there. For that, I have this stuff. This is titanium wire, which sounds very exotic, but it's actually really inexpensive. And this stuff is recommended for jobs like this because it can take the heat and silver solder does not stick to it. It's not likely a risk here anyway. The wire is a long way from the bushings, but if you wanted to, for example, wire a single bushing into place, titanium wire is apparently the way to go. For those top bushings, I'm just putting the plugs in to once again protect the threads inside the bushings from the heat. The plugs also serve to add mass to the bushings and help them keep from getting overheated by the torch. It's quite possible to melt a boiler bushing if you get a little carried away in that area with the torch while silver soldering, which is something I have done, so the plugs add a little peace of mind. One last bit of silver solder prep while we're here. I want to make sure I have clearance around the tube plates. So I've got a one and a half thou feeler gauge here, and I should be able to run this all the way around the tube plate, but I can't. It gets stuck in a few places. So I'm marking the outer boundaries of the tight spots, and I'm going to clearance the boiler in those areas. And this is just because the boiler isn't perfectly round. Not surprising. It's mass production copper pipe. It's not intended to be dimensionally perfect, but it's very close. I only need like a thou. So the quickest and easiest way to do this is just to run a flap wheel in there and give myself some clearance. So making sure to clean the dust out after each round, and then I check it again. When I'm close and I want to get a little more precise, then I mark the area with a Sharpie specifically that I want to clearance. And then I can use the flap disc just in that area, and when the Sharpie mark is gone, then I check it again. So after a few rounds of that back and forth, I'm now able to run that feeler gauge all the way around, except of course where the studs are that are supporting the two plates while being silver soldered. And uh, that looks good. If you don't have a clearance all the way around the part, then the silver solder doesn't have anywhere to go, and it's going to be a leak and or a bad joint. Well, it's been an adventure, but we are ready for silver solder. This is it, ready to go. That's gonna be the next video in this series. So I know many of you are waiting for that. I've sure been waiting for it and it's gonna be a good one, I think. So tune in soon for the silver soldering video. But until then, thank you very much for watching. If you're enjoying this content, maybe hit me up there on Patreon. That's really what keeps this channel going. And I'll see you next time.